Hey everybody, so I know it can be kind of tough to think about getting started winter cycling and it can get expensive, especially if you go to the bike shop and buy all that amazing winter cycling gear that is available now, but I am here to help. Today is the Shifter Use This Not That Winter Cycling Edition. Hey, I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling, bike commuting and the ways we get around our cities. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you really like it, maybe hit that super thanks button. So in this video, I'm going to offer you some alternatives to the conventional wisdom of going and buying gear for winter cycling. And we're going to start with the bike itself. Now, if you want to go buy a fat bike, because that's what everybody rides in winter, I say go for it. Fat bikes are amazing. I love them. I ride them whenever I get the opportunity. They're so much fun and they really do a great job of keeping you upright. But they can be expensive. A new fat bike minimum, I'd say $1,500, but they go all the way up to eight or $10,000 if you get electric ones. Amazing, if you can afford it, do it. But if you can't, here's an alternative. Buy a new tire, and not just any tire, but a studded winter tire. And I say just buy one of them. I've been riding just one on the front for years. The back is just a regular old bike tire. And it's amazing for traction and for stability. It gives me so much confidence in riding. Uh, I just love it. I went for years without using any set of tires and I was fine. But then when I got one, I became a convert instantly. It's kind of like magic in the way it keeps you up on slippery conditions. Tire. Just a couple of things to make sure. Make sure your bike has enough room, enough clearance in the fork to take a studded tire because they are a bit wider. Um, but other than that, I say go for it. So here's tip number one. Use a studded tire, not a fat bike. So remember when you were a kid and your mom told you to always keep your head warm in the winter? Well, she was right. And the bike industry must have had good mothers too because there are amazing winter bike helmets out these days uh, that have inner liners that keep your head warm. You can also buy a cycling cap with ear flaps that'll keep your head warm, but all of these things cost money. A good bike helmet's probably a couple hundred bucks. Even those uh, liners can run you 60, 75 bucks, um, which are great. So buy them if you can. But if you can't, I have three alternatives here that may cost you a lot less than that. One is a beanie or a toque. I'm sorry, it's not a beanie. I'm Canadian. We call it a toque. And it's just a better word. It's a toque. Um, a thin toque should fit under your bike helmet, no problem, and it will keep your head warm. Even a thin one has kept, like this one has kept me warm down to really cold temperatures, way below the freezing point. You know how much this one cost? Nothing. It was free. I think from a case of beer. No, it's not a case of beer. It's a Cliff Bar. It's a promo toque, so it was free. That'll fit under your helmet. That's great. Um, what else works is this, which is a buff uh, buff brand buff it's just a thin piece of material that well let's let's demonstrate oh, these are great because they are versatile it can cover your neck or under your bike helmet you can pull it up and it covers your ears and your head uh, and that's amazing uh, to keep your head warm and this will run you maybe 20 bucks uh, and despite its thinness i can see through here uh, it does a really good job of keeping the heat in so i'm always impressed but if you really want to break out the big guns when it's really cold out, use your regular bike helmet. Go for the full balaclava. Uh, I've used this thing in 30 degrees below zero Celsius. Uh, I don't know what that is Fahrenheit. It's cold, really cold. And this does a great job as well. The nice thing about it is that, yes, it will fit under your bike helmet. No problems. You don't need to buy a whole new helmet for winter. Just spend 20 or 30 bucks on something warm to keep your head toasty through the season. To sum that up as our third point, Use a toque or a thin buff or balaclava, not a custom bike helmet. Moving on, one of the great innovations of winter cycling of the past few years has been around our feet. There are really great winter cycling shoes these days that really do a great job keeping your feet toasty and you can still clip into your pedals and set that personal best record on that fat bike race if that's what you're into. But I don't find those very practical uh, everyday cycling or bike commuting because I don't want to clip in anyway in the winter time. And also they're expensive. A good pair of shoes is a few hundred bucks minimum. So I'm here to offer some alternatives. My favorite is a good pair of Chelsea boots. These are my beloved yet aging uh, Blundstones. These aren't cheap either, but you can get cheaper versions in Bloodstone. And these keep my feet warm down to, you know, five or 10 degrees below the freezing mark. Uh, and I wear them every day. What I love about them is that I can also wear them all day at the office. So I don't have to bring other shoes. I can just wear a uh, nice pair of toasty boots. The best part is, of course, you have to pair them with a nice pair of warm socks. Here's my fatherly advice for you today. If you want to make winter more bearable throughout your entire life, buy good winter socks. If the temperature gets below that, I'm going all in on the winter boots, which is what I'm wearing right now. 
These, uh, you know, if you live in a winter climate, you've probably got these anyway. Don't fuss, just put the warm socks on, put the big boots on and ride. Yes, it will slow you down. Yes, they're a bit clunky, and, but you're not setting any personal best records on your bike commute in the wintertime anyway. You're just trying to get to your destination. So yeah, maybe pack your office shoes in your bag, but just keep those feet warm. It can be tough for a lot of people to keep the extremities warm. So don't scrimp uh, and don't go spend a bunch of money. Just use the boots you've got and ride your bike. It works just fine. So this tip is use regular winter boots, not custom cycling boots. Next tip is about keeping your whole body warm. And uh, thanks to fat biking, there are also some great uh, cycling clothing out there for winter time now. Some tights or bibs, you know, the kit, the traditional cycling kit that's nice and tight and you can really get out there and uh, it'll keep you warm down to a certain point. Um, but also who wants to like show up at work or to meet some friends for a drink wearing their cycling kit. I just like to wear regular clothes when I ride. And so those aren't that much helpful to me. And those things are expensive too. A good pair of uh, winter cycling tights, cycling tights will cost you, uh, depending on the brand, of course, a couple hundred bucks probably. But what I'd like to do is something hidden and that's, okay, I'll show you a little bit underneath is long underwear. This is my secret to winter. I have a merino wool base layer that I'm always wearing almost every day in the winter time, but absolutely when I'm out riding my bike, I've got a uh, head to toe base layer on there. I love to use the merino wool stuff because it's so good. That stuff can be expensive too, so you don't need it, but even the cotton ones that you can pick up, you know, at Walmart for, you know, 12 or 15 bucks uh, are pretty good. They do a great job keeping you warm. You put them underneath, it's gonna keep you nice and toasty. That base layer is so important and so affordable. You can absolutely do that for low budget. If worst comes to worst, when you get to your destination, this is the big fear is that you get there, you go inside, you warm up, you get really hot. So you may have to sneak off to the bathroom and strip off those that inside layer and then put it back on again. But what I like about it too is that you can probably get through most of your day and not even think about it. It just keeps you nice and cozy all day long. So use long underwear, not winter cycling gear. So you fortunate enough to be like me and have a pair of bar mitts for your bike. These things are amazing. Sometimes they're called pogies, but you can slide your hands inside and uh, keep your hands warm while also being free to uh, pull your brake levers and shift gears uh, freely. They are great, but you know what they are? usually inexpensive. They can cost a bit of money. But you know what I found over the years that works almost as well as bar mitts or pogies? These things, mittens. I have a relatively thin pair of mittens and I love mittens better than gloves. I find mittens keeps your hands warmer. Uh, and they just do a great job keeping my hands warm. And because I'm lucky enough on this bike to have a pistol shifter, I don't need my fingers free to manipulate the gears. And I can also pull the brakes and shift no problem. And these are cheap and I need them for winter anyway, so it's no extra cost. You can also, of course, get cycling gloves. Sometimes they're lobster, uh, meaning they're sort of separate your fingers this way so that you can still shift. Depending on the kind of shifter you have, you may need that. Um, but I've also found riding other bikes that these ones are thin enough that I can still shift using my index finger and my thumb if I need to. I don't need anything special to do it. I think sometimes uh, a regular pair of gloves can work just as well. So if you can't afford a beautiful pair of bar mitts or pogies, a good pair of gloves or mittens will work just as well. So use mittens, not bar mitts. Okay, one final tip, and this is not a use this, not that style because I don't think this applies to everybody. But if you're a skier, you know, skiing is my second favorite winter activity. Um, you may have one of these in your possession and it's a ski helmet. And for years, fellow winter cyclists would recommend these to me and I would kind of roll my eyes because I felt like overkill. Do I really need to go that hardcore just to get to work? And then I tried it on a really cold day. And I got to say, wearing a ski helmet is pretty amazing on a really cold day on a bike because they're built for cold. They're lined, they're warm and cozy. And um, this also, sometimes they'll have goggles. And so some people have a problem keeping their eyes warm uh, when the rest of their face is covered up. I don't have that problem. I feel like maybe I've killed all of the nerves around my eyes. They don't get that cold. So I don't really use goggles, but some people swear by them. And I gotta say on a cold day, it's just so nice and cozy and safe to wear a bike helmet or a ski helmet like this. So again, not cheap, a little bit, of, it's a bit spendy if you wanna get a good ski helmet, but that's why it's a bonus tip, consider it in your life. You know what I mean. Okay, that's it. That's all of my tips for today. Uh, I love winter cycling. The goal of this video was just to make it a bit more accessible to everyone. Of course, if you can afford all that great winter cycling gear that's available now, 
go for it. It wasn't there 10 or 15 years ago, so we're really lucky to have access to all this stuff. But also, you don't really need any of that stuff. It's easy to get out and ride a bike with just a few accommodations in your life. So hopefully this opens up winter cycling a bit to you. And if you have other suggestions, please share them in the comments down below. I know lots of people get a lot of uh, great ideas from those comments. So thank you for watching and thank you for sharing. I'll see you next time. Thank you.